I'd like to talk this evening about the grace of divine relationship. Usually when divine relationship is being spoken about, what is being pointed to is relationship with the master, the guru, can be in any form really, a mountain. person. A lover. Ultimately the form is immaterial, but it has a vital role. It is what draws the habit of someone into the readiness of no one. It usually takes on a human form because if you identify who you are as human, then the human form is the bridge. It is something conditioning the ego can relate to. But its nature is to reveal what is called divine relationship. The closest it comes in the human life is the flush of young infatuation. When your ego believes it has gotten what it's after, in true divine relationship, it is the opposite. It is not the getting, but what is recognized in divine relationship is what your senses initially see as someone slowly begins to be recognized as nothing but a pure offer to you. The more this is recognized, the more the walls of protection begin to melt. The more the taste reveals itself. Eventually what is discovered is that true love is not in the receiving. It is in the offering. True love, true, pure, divine love wants to offer itself.
when it has reached a point where there is the taste of the yearning to offer. This is the beginning of the spark of true divine relationship. as opposed to the readiness to die by meeting the ego's fears. It becomes the passion of the love affair. There is this sense that who I am or I was or what had defined me wants to drown in it. Wants to be completely absorbed by it. And what it is, is the purity of divine love that initially looked like something or someone because it started as a hand, as a bridge for conditioned mind. But when there is the readiness to die into it, then it is all that remains. And then everything that appears, every form, every supposed situation, everything is tasted as that. The moment the conditioning has drowned in it. It is the yearning of every heart. It is only that conditioned mind out of its fear has turned it into a getting for me. But when the habit of getting for me meets what is not looking for anything but to just be an offering to you. This is the beginning of what is called being caught in the jaws of the tiger. And where is this relationship ultimately discovered inside of you? Where it always has been. Form has a vital role foremost, but at a certain point it has done its work. And then it is time to let it go.
It is the symbol. It is in the reflection. If it is met initially with this story of reflection, it can never carry you through everything that created the sense of separation. That is why it starts out looking like someone. But when the trust roots itself, it will bring up conditioning spheres only to dismantle them. If they never arise, most likely the true meeting has not happened yet. But when conditioning receives what is pure, what is pure offering, it melts quite rapidly. It tastes this love affair, and then all it wants is to offer itself And this is when true love is discovered. And then the role of the symbol has done its work. And what is discovered is that it lives inside. Once the separate one has fallen into it deep enough that it is ready to drown in it, in its beauty, then it is all that remains.